Childcare programs are often the only places where young children are seen on a daily basis for an extended period of time. Children who are being abused or maltreated may not be able to develop to their maximum potential. They may carry emotional scars the rest of their lives, and depending on the type and severity of abuse or maltreatment, there can be long-term physical effects as well. There are certain people, called mandated reporters, who are required by law to report suspected child abuse. Mandated reporters include child care providers and other people who come into contact with children on a regular basis. As a mandated reporter, you may be the first person to suspect and report child abuse or maltreatment. It's essential that you become knowledgeable about these issues and take action to interrupt the cycle of abuse, even though you may have mixed feelings about doing so. You also have an important role in educating parents about child abuse and maltreatment and helping them find the resources they need during difficult times. Let's find out more about what it means to be a mandated reporter. So Brian, what are the responsibilities of a mandated reporter? Well, a mandated reporter, uh, they're individuals who've been specifically named in family uh, or social services law that have contact with children. Their specific responsibilities are if they have reason to believe that a child has been maltreated or abused to contact the state central register. Who are these individuals that are named mandated reporters? Well, they're law officers, uh, hospital personnel, social service workers, daycare providers, just to name a few. Now, there's specific language that is used um, to describe child abuse and maltreatment. Can you share that with us? Well, the definition of maltreatment and abuse, actually, are when you have a child that's at risk of or is in imminent risk of permanent or protracted injury, sex abuse, physical maltreatment, if you will, would qualify any child when that abuse or maltreatment has been perpetrated or allowed to be perpetrated by a person legally responsible. They should then contact the state central register. And when you say person legally responsible, what does that mean? Well, the state says that any person that has regular, consistent contact with a child can be considered a person legally responsible. But we're talking about people who act in a parental role, babysitters, daycare providers, a neighbor who regularly watches a child. So technically, any person that has regular, frequent contact with a child can be considered a person legally responsible. Let's get on to the definition of maltreatment. How do you describe it? Well, basically, maltreatment is when the emotional, physical, or uh, mental capacity of a child is at risk of being diminished, or for lack of a better way of putting it, the minimum degree of care that New York State says a child must be uh, given. If that level isn't reached, that child would be considered maltreated. Brian, what does minimum degree of care mean? Yeah, minimum degree of care is just that, the minimum standard. What you and I might consider the minimum degree isn't what New York State says. Any child, regardless of their race, color, or creed, they're entitled to uh, proper medical, education, clothing, uh, shelter, food, uh, basic nutrition. Those are, those are items that every child is entitled to when that minimum degree isn't reached. At that point, a call can be made to the register. Okay, but let's say that a family doesn't have the resources to provide for their child. Which, unfortunately, we may still register a report. At no time would we look at a person's economic status to determine whether or not a report would be registered. Um, our job is to get the child or provide help for the family. If a person isn't able to afford uh, proper medical or whatever the treatment may be, it's our job to let them know what's out there for them, the services that are available. After we've, I guess, let the parents of the persons legally responsible make them aware of what those services are, at that point, if follow-up isn't, you know, if that hasn't taken place at that time, we would register a report. Okay, so we provide the information we tell them where they can go, what's yes. available, and then if they don't follow through, yes. Now that that's may. A, yes, that's not in every instance. There are some instances where even though we might know that a person cannot afford uh, whatever those services are, we would still register the report. Social services law says that a family may be unable or unwilling. So in either scenario, we would probably still register the report. Okay, and get the family help. The help that they require, correct. How do we know, as a mandated reporter, 
when to make the report? Well, there are certain signs that everyone should be aware of. Uh, there are marks and bruises. Typically, if a child tells you how they sustained an injury and you're alerted or the mandated reporter is made aware that the person legally responsible caused it or allowed it to happen. History in a household is, a, is, is very important. The types of bruises, there are types of burns where you can tell if a child was immersed or whether or not it was a spill. Um, so there are a, quite a few red flags that mandated reporters can be, uh, t you know, that they should look out for. Okay, and make a report. Absolutely. Okay, thanks Brian. Now that you have a better understanding of your role as a mandated reporter, your trainer has an activity that will give you a chance to practice your observation skills.